What's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk to you about my latest purchase, which was eight months ago. Uh, since the last video I posted, I actually sold the Mustang, bought a house, got engaged, and what I sold the Mustang for was this. It is a 2008 Ford F450 King Ranch with the dreaded 6.4 liter. Buying a 6.4 is not necessarily a bad thing. If you could get a truck with a good price with good mileage, you actually might get lucky. So the reason why I bought this 6.4 is because it's a King Ranch 450 with 60,000 miles on it. It now has 68,000 miles on it, but the cool part is that Ford actually gave me a full warranty with it. So this truck has a bumper to bumper warranty which I've already used a few times. Not because of the engine, surprisingly. One of them was because the EGT sensor in the DPF was clogged up and it was making the truck go into limp mode. So what they did was replace the EGT sensor. But since the EGT sensor hasn't been removed in a couple of years and with so many heat cycles that it broke off inside of the DPF and they actually just replaced the DPF under warranty. So that was a $2,200 part that I got for $100. Uh, another reason I brought it in was the um, blower door actuator or the motor. The uh, actuator inside the cab, which allows the hot and cold water or air to go through, went bad and that was replaced under warranty. But besides that, I haven't had any issues with the truck. I put 8,000 miles on it, and to date, I know it's a 6.4, no issues. But there's other good reasons why to buy a 6.4. So since it has such a terrible reputation, you could get these trucks fairly cheap. And what you're getting with these trucks is some modern stuff. They are a big upgrade in terms of interior and towing capacity compared to the 6.0s. For example, my 2008 here, King Ranch 4x4 has a gooseneck rate, tow rating of 24,100 pounds and 16,000 pounds on the bumper. So you're able to still haul a lot with this truck at a fairly cheap price compared to the new F350. If you look in the interior of these trucks, they have very modern features in them, such as touchscreen navigation, dual zone AC control or climate control, heated seats, non-ventilated seats, but those don't really work too well, auxiliary controls, trailer brake controller, adjustable foot pedals, shift on the fly four-wheel drive, rear power window slide, and then on the steering wheel, you got the radio controls right there along with the temperature control for the cabin plus a fan control on the other side your cruise control window controls for all four windows and then you got your mirror controls as well these are power fold power extend power everything minus that little blind spot mirror that's still manual i think they're still manual in today's truck dimmable so when the headlights hit it it does dim cool feature about this truck it actually comes with a dvd system in it and I can control the DVD system from the head unit right there so that's the one of the reasons why I didn't change it out I do have the original headphones that go to this DVD system that are wireless and they still work now let's get to the business end of a 6.4 the 6.4's Achilles heel is well it's overall design it wasn't very designed very well by Navistar as many of you know Navistar built this engine and Ford bought it the new 6.7 power strokes are Ford in-house motors, but there are some good points about this engine that a lot of people do rave. One, it is very quick. This is a pretty quick truck. It weighs about 8,000 pounds, closer to nine, and it does giddy up and go. It does have that dual turbo on it. So right there is actually two turbos. It's not a twin turbo and it's not a compound turbo. Not one turbo doesn't feed four cylinders, which would make it a twin turbo, and one turbo is not feeding it the other one, which would make it a compound turbo. What it really is, is a dual turbo. So there's an actuator arm, which is right there. That actually moves a valve, which allows the smaller turbo or the bigger turbo 
to spin up or produce power. That was to help with the no lag. And this truck does not have a lot of lag. It does take about a half a second for that little one to get going, but once it does, it's off to the races. The Achilles heel of this truck, which there are many, but the main one is this device right here. That is your EGR valve. For those who don't know, an EGR valve is an exhaust gas return or recirculating exhaust. Basically, it's taking the exhaust, putting it through, which is called the EGR cooler, which is there's a cooler right there, and then there's another one down low, and that's your engine coolant running through those to cool the exhaust gas to be reburned. There's many forms and reads. You can read all about this. That is Achilles heel almost every new diesel that these EGR valves are just total trash. They just shorten the life of these engines so much. Ford did try to combat that with a big radiator, but the radiator itself was flawed. It has an aluminum core with a plastic end cap, so these end caps are prone to leak. So, in turn, the 6.4 truck is plagued with a lot of problems that are very well documented and hence why they're so cheap. So you could get into a 6.4 fairly cheap, which the truck itself can be in good condition. You know, nice interior, nice ride, nice transmission, differential and all that. But the engine could be cooked and you could just go ahead and just rebuild that engine or buy a new one, remanufacture one or built one. Built ones are about 17 grand, so I don't know if I would go that route. Or you could just do what uh, a lot of people are starting to do now, which is a Cummins conversion. You just buy the conversion kit, you buy the engine, put it all together, and now you got yourself a Cummins. And you could just uh, drive around that and have a really cool truck that looks good, rides good, and sounds good, and it's dependable. That's my ultimate goal when that engine finally lets go at who knows when. But I will be deleting it to help prolong that life because the deletion kit's less than $1,000. The come and swap route is about 12 to 15 depending on what parts you go with. But all in all, I'm really happy with my truck and I don't plan on selling it anytime soon. See you guys later.